गुड इवनिंग इवनिंग मिस्टर शर्मा दीपिका मैम मिस्टर रायतानी फॉर ज्वाइनिंग दिस वेबिनार आई एम अरिंदम घोष आई एम दाइस प्रेजिडेंट एंड हेड ऑफ स्ट्रेटेजी फ्रॉम स्कूल नेट इंडिया लिमिटेड स्कूल नेट हैज बीन एड टेक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फॉर द लास्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स वी हैव बीन वर्किंग विद स्कूल अप्रॉस इंडिया एज वेल एज ग्लोबली and internally we have been uh, organizing uh, this uh, sessions such as this under the format of ideas exchange where our objective has been to learn from uh, people from all stakeholders pertaining to education so it is in continuation of that ideas exchange format that we uh, have organized to discuss and deliberate on the big questions facing education in a post pandemic world I would request my colleague, uh, Mr. Vagish Jha, to uh, briefly explain what the topic of discussion today is, and thereafter take it forward. Vagish Ji, thank you, Arindam. So I am Vagish Jha, and uh, I uh, take care of the academic uh, department of uh, Schoolnet. It is a great pleasure to have you here. As a part of uh, introducing this uh, program, uh, allow me to indulge in a short story that I am going to tell you. the interesting thing about a story is that a story should be interesting even though you know about it so the story mm-hmm. is like this that the year 2020 will go down in the history of uh, in the history of human civilization as a global disruptor you know it will be remembered as a year when an invisible virus brought the human vanity of conquering nature down with a third stark but silent it was a year when the uh, humans self quarantined themselves into a hibernation while wild animals roamed the central square of metro city you must have seen sparkling ganga with surprise number of dolphins increased but schools got deserted it impacted more than 285 million young learners in india alone schools woke up quickly after the initial days the real school turned into the virtual ones we all have seen this teachers hurriedly got into action in front of the laptop and mobile they started doing to computers and mobiles what they would do in the actual classroom home became the classroom lively students were turned into insignificant thumbnails soon dawned the realization however that uh, for online learning to be effective it must be informed by the science and arts of digital learning digital fatigue began to take over by the end of the year it was clear that education will not remain the same anymore big questions stared in the face of us uh as i tell you this uh, and the new year has begun some new hopes have come in the vaccination has arrived schools have started opening partially the unprecedented challenge however offered great and fertile uh, ground for innovation and new things it always does this is the time when school leaders are offering optimism by hitting upon new ideas and practices on the school campus this is the time to huddle up come together feel the collective warmth of each other to think of a cogent and effective response not that all of us have any you know clear idea how how to respond to some of the situations that are emerging and therefore we need to come together this is the time to listen to the leaders stakeholders intently and sincerely that is precisely the reason that we are here today sir and ma'am for an intimate dialogue on education with some outstanding educators and school leaders welcome you all in the big question i hope Thanks. that all my uh, participants will be uh, and others those who are uh, joining this webinar will make it, it to be a very worthwhile uh, experience for uh, each one of us because it is a dialogue let it be a free flowing kind of a thing but before we begin into the dialogue part of it i request uh, the participants to give their brief introduction to the viewers so uh, may i start with uh, uh, ma'am ladies first they say <laughs> yes ma'am. good afternoon everybody i am mrs deepika water and i am the senior principal at hamilton academy now and i've been in the field of education for a long time but let me tell you with all these years of experience 
we had never experienced something like what we did in 2020. So all along we have been sailing through and I've been a part of the setup of education for a long, long time. Yes. Uh, Hemant Sharma, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Hemant Kumar Sharma. I am working as a director for all English medium schools of Mula Education Society, Sonai, which is a remote place in the Ahmednagar district. And uh, the place where right now I am working is a real vision of our founder president, Sri Yashwant Rao Gadak Sahib. In the remote area, he thought about giving English medium education to remote students and providing all sort of technological support to them so that tomorrow they can face the challenges which are real-time challenges for them. And I can say very proudly that in past around 30 years of my experience in school education, whatever we have seen the transformation at third gear in 2020, as Madam has said very nicely, that from third gear, suddenly we went in the sixth gear. And it is really a good experience for all of us. And a lot of challenges are there for all of us, which we are going to face or which we are going to share today in this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, now, Joy Raitani, sir. Good evening, everyone. I am Joy Raitani. I am the director of Guru Kripa Divine Grace Public School, Bhairaich. Guru Kripa Divine Grace Public School, Bhairaich was started by Madam Chavi. She is the founder and manager of the school and she is the head of the school. The school was started in 2004 under a tree. And within these, uh, this short span of time, it is now a CBSE senior mm -hmm. secondary school. And um, we have programs for schools such as JSA, that's credit examination for spoken English through Trinity College London. Uh, we have programs such as the International Food Film Festival. We have programs such that, uh, like Design for Change, Joy of Giving Week. Bharaj is a small town located at the Nepal border in Uttar Pradesh. And under the vision and direction of our founder and manager, Madam Chavi, we are trying to bring about a change in the level of education that this district has. That's a short introduction about our school. So, uh, my viewers, you would be uh, convinced that we have such a illuminating uh, panel of uh, experts with us coming from different parts of the country, bringing in different kinds of uh, experiences and uh, uh, vision. Okay, great. So, uh, I have uh, got a few slides because I thought that today's day is not to take away time from the panelists, but this is a day of where we, we should listen. Uh, briefly, in five minutes, I would try to explain and give an overview of what we do as part of SchoolNet. SchoolNet uh, has been an education organization for the last 20 years. It was established in 1999 and uh, 1997, sorry. More than 20 years, it has been working in the areas of education, skill development, and also improving the livelihoods of people. What we fondly call as the three E's agenda. Our objective as you see in this particular slide, is um, enabling learning for life and empowering learners by democratizing education, employability, and employment. What we mean by democratizing here is that improving access to quality education, access to quality employability opportunities, and improving access to quality employment opportunities as well. Our core values and beliefs, uh, if we briefly explain on the left hand side what you see is that we intend to be we are passionately focused on learners and learning and whatever work we do in these areas of education employability or employment we intend to create shared values and here by shared value we mean both economic value as well as social value for the stakeholders and in all of these cases whatever we do across the board we believe in the power of technology in the power of technology that can help democratize this access to education, employability, and employment. Internally, we always focus on constantly improving our domain expertise and remain focused on excellence. We have been an extremely resilient organization, probably one of the few organizations that have uh, been in the space for almost two decades. 
and internally we believe in inclusivity and innovation inclusivity meaning uh, cooperate all stakeholders in the decision making process currently we impact around 15 million learners across the three e's agenda going forward over the next 10 years we intend to impact 150 million learners what we do we are basically a group of three companies as part of school net we are focused in improving the quality and delivery of education education in the k12 space we have another company called learnet that does vocational skill development we have vocational training institutes across the country around 200 institutes and thirdly we have another company called good worker which essentially provides uh, employment linkages to people in the uh, informal sector so across all these three initiatives we impact 15 million people as part of our education vertical we do four things broadly ma'am and sirs uh, a is we help schools in setting up digital classrooms and when we talk of digital classrooms you are already aware of our product kian which is a combination of computing plus projection plus interactivity uh, we have curriculum aligned multimedia content for, for almost all subjects we offer training of teachers and we also handhold uh, in the implementation of this classroom solutions and provide assessment and monitoring and evaluation support as well so that's what we do as part of our digital classroom in addition we have english language training services where also we extensively use technology in fact we set up language labs in schools and uh, use technology to implement or teach uh, english to students uh, of late we have uh, recently launched i mean recently meaning 2 uh, years ago we have launched a new product which is called genio which is a blended product a hybrid product both for schools as well as for students outside schools an online product for self learning as well as teacher assisted learning it is basically a platform for learning services similar to byju's and vedantus of the world and lastly in addition to all of that we work in the areas of quality and supplementary education essentially improving the life skills employability skills of children in the schools so these are broadly the four things that we do kian of course you know uh, we have been working uh, very closely and uh, as an extension of kian we have been working with uh, google by uh, adopting their uh, applications for education their uh, uh, edtech devices and we have been implementing what we call the classroom solutions as an extension of the digital classroom initiative across several smart cities which has seen uh, been profiled by the bbc also in you of course i uh, just now discussed and it is currently being used across 500 schools and 3 and 1/2 lakh learners are uh, using it uh, and the interesting thing about genio is that this is one of the products which has got both application in the school as well as outside school It, it it takes the teacher in the equation and it is focused on improving the learning outcomes of children so almost all those children who have taken our uh, lessons through genio have shown 70% improvement in learning outcomes and as i said this is through schools teachers are also part of this equation so broadly with all these initiatives we uh, as i said we impact 15 million people directly uh, we are present in almost all states of india barring probably a few and uh, we have also implemented our solutions in a couple of countries outside india and um, we intend to take this forward with the support of school leaders like you in contributing more towards education going forward so that's briefly about school net and uh, during this pa pandemic time we have seen extensive use of technology um, i mean uh, we probably were forced to use technology during the pandemic induced lockdown and going forward as schools reopen we would like to see how uh, you know schools cope with the challenge and if there has been any learning loss how that learning loss is recovered once the schools open so we would like to hear from you and we'd also like to learn how we as an edtech institution can uh, contribute going forward towards the learning and development of students teachers and the community thank you thank you arindam for a, a very brief and succinct uh, Uh, introduction i would however like to add to uh, two more things very very quickly to this is that you see we uh, as schoolnet believes uh, as the pioneer uh, which started uh, doing educational technology 20 years ago that we believe that technology does not teach it is the teachers who teach and therefore uh, we are looking at the schools as our partners 
they are not our clients whom we have given certain things and done away with that so in that the continuous academic support is one thing that uh, we intend to do we would like to see that the learning outcomes are achieved we would like to also encounter some of the problems that our teachers and uh, schools are facing and would like to be uh, with them as the fellow traveler and uh, uh, therefore the teachers must need to be uh, taken into account the technology cannot replace a teacher teacher can become more efficient by using the technology so that is where we come in and we give teacher training and different kinds of support so uh having said this i am sure that these are the things that are going to come in uh, be a part of our first section and the first section is where i want briefly my uh, panelists uh, arindam to share with us some of the challenges that they faced uh, in the time uh, that they faced last year and 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 right now even so uh, let's let's focus only on the challenges how do you look at the challenges what are the challenges that you consider to be the most formidable and uh, daunting ones anyone can start but then uh, since uh, everybody will wait for somebody else to start so this time i will start with uh, with uh, mr joy raitani yes okay i think uh, the biggest challenge was the accessibility of internet with everyone that is a global challenge and uh, when i talk about education i believe education is for all it's not just for a few students studying in the private schools and whether they are the a grade b grade or c grade private schools we have thousands and tens of thousands of children studying at the government school as well for them availability of a smartphone or of the internet like i said it was the biggest challenge but then again i think the government did a fantastic job you know they came up with a channel i think uh, it's for swayam prabha in which they have been running educational programs and educational videos and the entire curriculum was made available through the tv so the students could watch and not get uh, not not and not lag behind the, with the entire learning teaching and learning process um the another big challenge like i said is always the accessibility to internet not everyone has a good internet connectivity not everybody has a good wifi then i feel there's also a divide in the number of devices available at home there are several families in even studying in private schools even if their kids are studying in private schools there would be families where they only have one smartphone or just one laptop where the father and the mother has to share the laptop for work or let's say the father has to work and he has the smartphone in such cases students without an access to a smartphone uh, the online classes cannot be possible and then uh, the teacher training was required intense 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 teacher training was required to overcome this new challenge this new sphere this new era of learning and um, of course there are there are other limitations also like the quality of education in my personal opinion uh, everybody has their own opinions in my personal opinion there are a lot of hands on activities which cannot be taken online uh the one on one interaction the relationship that a teacher and a student has that classroom experience uh, of a safe zone of of uh, expressing yourself asking questions very freely in a classroom in a traditional classroom setting i think it this barrier will take a certain amount of time to be crossed and um the safeguarding of data and info in my opinion is another big challenge we need to make sure that the data and the information is not leaked out to the public domain and um, cyber bullying is a challenge we all know we all face that and it has been evident in all the schools during this pandemic during the live online classes some miscreants some negative uh, forces do come into play and then there are some uh, unrequired messages that go that go on the chat box on the live chat box we have for doubt clearing so these are some of the major challenges in learning in terms of learning i feel quality learning takes place in a traditional classroom because there are a lot of hands on activities or role play that a teacher and the students can take place that can be done in a classroom so these are the major challenges in my opinion thank you can thank I you add to that? can i add to what he said sure, mr sure. rani sure see first of all it came all of a sudden we were not really prepared for this long session online second thing that happened was that in most of the places the child did not have a learning space for himself 
which is a basic requirement. A classroom is a place where he settles down. Now in a home, he had a lot of family members coming in, one room where everybody is in and out. So you had parents participating, parents disturbing, siblings around. So yeah. those that was also a challenge which we the teacher was facing all the time. And I agree with Mr. Ratnani that we needed to train and train and train. See, we brought on Zoom, then we changed to some other system. We felt that was not working. We came on to Zoom because it was a, you know, like learn and somehow manage to carry it. It was an uh, evolving process. Uh, yes, we were just evolving, you know, not sure whether we are taking the right st the step in the right dis uh, direction. Second thing, the challenge that we kept facing and which is very unfortunate, that we had a lot of cases coming in. So we were entering into the houses of the teachers who were also sometimes disturbed because there were so many calamities in the family. Children were suffering. So this was also creating an impact while we were running the online classes. And in some subjects which are easy to teach, just have you know a teaching methodology like that without hands-on requirement, we were successful. But in others, I still feel we need to bridge the gap now that we are opening. That is what I feel. And also, you know, like we collaborated a lot with other teachers at that juncture. We learned that, you know, we could take something from somebody rather than preparing everything myself for the class that was going to happen. And, uh, you know, like the uh, second thing, which, uh, you know, as a family and as a school, availability of finances, because everybody did not have the machines or the mobiles or the laptops or whatever required. Now, finance became an issue. You know, one uh, smartphone being shared between brothers, we were getting endless requests. I have one mobile and there are three children studying on it. So to arrange the timing in such a way so that each one can attend. So those were the kind of challenges which we were addressing. And yeah, personally, right. we were going into classes also and seeing from home what we could do, how was it going, how were they responding. So it was challenges all around. But I still feel as a school, we succeeded because somehow we were able to carry the syllabus through for the entire session and run the classes. I think that's quite a big effort without any preparation that we had for that. Yeah, surely. Yes, thank you very yes. much, uh, uh, Mrs. Bhattu. And now is the turn of uh, Himant Sharma, sir. What is the news from Maharashtra, sir? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, when we try to see the nature of challenges which we all have faced, I can say broadly that we are three T's are facing challenges. When we talk about T, T for teacher, mm -hmm. T for taught, and T for technology. These are the three T's who have faced a lot of challenges. When we start with teacher, yes, teacher has to change himself or herself from a classroom teaching. He was sitting in the class or he was teaching in the class and from chalk and duster and using blackboard, the teacher has to suddenly shift to online teaching. Now, when we talk about online teaching, yes, one thing the teacher has done, that is from the blackboard, the teacher has shifted to either mobile or laptop. That was the first thing which the teacher has done and for which the teacher has faced a lot of challenges. When we talk about a classroom teaching, a teacher is teaching a group of students, a known group of students in four walls or in the school premises. Now what suddenly has happened is that all the four walls, they have fallen down. Now the teacher has become open to everyone, not only to his students, but to the parents, to the grandparents, to friends, to relatives. That means the teacher has become available or the teacher is teaching globally to everyone. When we come to second T, that is taught a student. The, now when we talk about a taught, now a taught has moved from classroom to bedroom. 
I can say that <laughs> earlier these children they were binded by these four walls of the classroom, and they were focused to what teacher was teaching. Now, when the child has gone to bedroom, that means the child has moved to his comfort zone. When child has moved to comfort zone, that means he is not limited to a particular focused point. Earlier, the size of the blackboard was very big in the classroom. Now, the size of blackboard has been compressed in the form of the size of a small mobile screen, or a laptop screen, or a computer screen, whatever was available to him. So suddenly, this change for a child, for a tot, was the biggest challenge for him to understand, to focus, to learn. And third, definitely, we all agree that it is the technology. When we talk about technology, there are a lot of technological changes. Whether we are talking about mobile, or we are talking about computers, or we are talking about internet, or we are talking about laptops, or we are talking about internet speed, because it has disrupted. when video and audio both are going simultaneously that means sometimes the technology is not supporting everyone those who are in the remote place where signals are weak i have seen and you know our own teachers they were working in the field and they were going under one or the other tree and then they were trying to find that from where they are going to get a proper signal same thing is the situation with students also those who are in the urban area they are also facing some types of uh, some types of challenges and those who are in the in the rural area they have to run here and there parents have to purchase mobiles to their children and then they are struggling a lot with this technology and with time we are definitely going to overcome all these challenges plus there is one more factor which we all have to consider and that factor is parents parents their expectations parents their awareness so parents are we can say one of the biggest hidden area where we all need to focus because without their support a child can never learn so they have to provide all sort of support to their children whether it is technological support or it is moral support or whatever type of support it is and we have been provided all sort of help and guidance by government from time to time but at the end of the day we have to say that the effectiveness of online class is one of the biggest challenge which all the schools almost they have faced students have faced teachers have faced so these are so many challenges which we have faced during this lockdown time and most of the challenges we have already overcome and we are still in the process more and more challenges we will overcome more and more progress we are going to make all right so arindam this is a fantastic set of challenges that has been outlined by uh, the Uh, participate by our distinguished panelists is it uh, would you like to summarize or should i yeah, i think uh, mr sharma uh, did that for me uh, <laughs> success, successfully he has put all the challenges into these three buckets the teacher the tot and uh, technology and, yeah. uh, and mr raitani at the beginning uh, did point out the technological challenges uh the infrastructure issues all of all of that and the fact that uh the teachers and mrs watkal also uh, uh strengthened that particular point saying that there was significant uh efforts that went into training of teachers because prior to this they were used to teaching in a particular way so and uh, what mr sharma said that uh from the four walls of the classroom we transcended during this lockdown into the uh the residence and the bedroom of the students and therefore uh, we became accessible across uh to students parents and uh, their family uh so it so keeping and and the lack of focus made it difficult for for the teacher to keep the child engaged so uh what we understand uh, is that of course there were there have been technological challenges but the bigger challenge was to keep the focus of the child on education on the particular subject that is being taught and then there was this particular challenge of also training of teachers in the utilization of technology now having uh, all those challenges vagi ji with your uh, permission if i may ask can I, can i can i can i can i add a few more very very interesting points that have emerged from them apart right. from the generic ones that are there uh, one i would like to say i mean yes uh, access is a problem training is a problem all three of them said 
about that. Access we can't do, but training is the central core concern for them. The, the interesting part is that the need for a specific dignified space for learning, that is not there. You need to have a dignified and uh, specific uh, space for learning. It is not that anywhere you start learning and uh, you start accessing uh, your uh, this thing. So one is that. The other is the ethical uh, problem is that we are trans transgressing into the personal uh, you know, spaces of teachers and students and parents and all, all of them. So is that, uh, that, that at times is very embarrassing. It's possible that they do not have any such kind of a personal space. And that ethical point was also because of the uh, made vulnerable the teachers themselves. So that vulnerability is a very important part. And I would say that uh, the cyber safety issue that uh, Mr. Raitani raised has been a very major, major kind of an issue. Uh, and finally, I, I, I say that uh, I, I found uh, this uh, particular point about the quality learning in the traditional class that is happening uh, that uh, Mr. Raitani very emphatically said. Uh, and the, the issue is that uh, online is not the end and all uh, in itself. So there has to be what I hear, which they did not say, is that probably the blended blended learning is the way out. But uh, I don't want to anticipate. I don't want to anticipate their uh, answers. And now, uh, Arindam, we can ask for the way forward from you. Yeah. So actually, it's the it's follow up to this particular having these challenges. Pure online and digital uh, definitely has its own challenges. Now that schools are going to reopen, vaccinations are all out. Um, uh, sometime uh, going forward. So what, how do we see the uh, education landscape emerging? And what role technology, because schools would have invested in, in technology and uh, with limited success, but going forward, what role you see technology can play in uh, shaping uh, teaching, in, in shaping the teaching learning process? So that's the question. So will, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So will the school be the same? Will the school be the same, uh, do you think, or they are going to change? in a very fundamental sense. How are you looking at the response? What is the way out? Right. See, actually, I would like to say that first and foremost, schools now are going to accept e-learning. And, you know, we train our teachers that one day you will have to go in for blended learning where you should be in the classroom using this tool also so that you are well-versed and in times of calamity, both can be used. Your, this technique should be proficient by now. We need to do professional development of teachers so that if and no hiccups come up when e-learning is concerned. That means, again, going into real training for each and every teacher so that use of technology is accepted and we are able to go on with it without any dis disturbance. Then how I like to put it, we need to design a 21st century toolkit. Okay. When I talk of a toolkit, I mean a syllabus which, you know, helps us to implement this technology, teaching through this technology. See, we cannot be taking up certain things which cannot be taught in this process and method because there are so many things which cannot be, which requires a classroom because it's hands-on. So can we design things which will help teachers to teach even these topics through technology? Because if it has come here to stay, and as it is, if you look at the school's opening, we are opening certain class for two days, certain class for three days. That's how we are starting with the setup. So obviously we are carrying on online plus school. So we are mixing up the two. So we need to design a toolkit which will help us implement this. Then I always feel that we should, before we bring on the next class, we should be having a bridge type of course for them, which should take up the basics which need to be carried on. Like if I give an example, we don't need the entire syllabus. If we are just looking at one subject like English, we can pick up what needs to be carried later so that we revise that with the child so that no lacuna is left for the next class which will emerge by April. 
So we need to go into some bridge course type of teaching for the children when they are coming, whether we do it online or we do it as you know a combined effort of technology as a blended learning so that they can cover up in this. And you know, we need to encourage emotionally build up our teachers because they have had a raw deal through the year. See, everybody was relaxing in the lockdown, having a good time, but the teaching community was on their toes, teaching throughout, whether it was lockdown, Sunday, whatever. So we need to emotionally build up our teaching community. We need to make them feel they are the most important people in the society because without them, our children cannot function. It's been a raw deal in schools where so many teachers have been terminated, so many removed. So we need to look at that angle of teachers also. And we need to you know, produce quality learning and teaching materials that will help us to pave the way forward in the education of 21. That's what I feel. We really need to go into the content section to revise, to come up with things which, you know, are easy to implement, which will take us forward now. That's what I feel, the way forward. Thank you. Thank you for putting uh, it so passionately and so clearly. Can we come to Hemant Sharma, sir? How are you? Uh, sure. what, are the, what, are, what are the way forward that you are looking at? How are you looking at uh, this challenge? And what are the way forward? What are the steps that you are taking? And you should be taking. Sure, should be taking. Uh, here, right. here, I would like to add and say that this is the time when we have to do paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. Now, paradigm shift from offline to online has already taken place. This corona and lockdown has taught us that suddenly we have to shift from offline regular classroom teaching to online teaching and we do not know till how long this online teaching will go on continuing. But I feel that still we have to further change it to blended learning. That means it is a mix as Madam has said that it is a mix of offline teaching and online teaching. Now here, when we want to say that mix of offline teaching and online teaching, that means the blended teaching. Here, I would like to say that the type of online teaching which is going on in most of the institutions and schools is simply shifting or showing whatever is happening in the classroom to the child through mobile or we can say one person is taking video shooting through mobile and another person is teaching on the board the way the teacher is teaching in classroom. This is what is happening in more than 90% of cases. And this is the reason why students are feeling bored when they are attending same thing, sitting in their comfort zone. Now, as a teacher, I need to understand that it is not a shifting of what I am teaching on the board in the comfort zone of a student. It is something different. Online teaching is totally different than what we are doing in offline teaching. We have to give assignments, we have to give projects, we have to give surfing assignments to students to do online. And online they have to search, they have to collaborate, they have to work. Then only they are going to enjoy that online teaching. Now when we talk about blended teaching, that means it is a mix of offline and online teaching, whatever is going on, and a new modified form of effective teaching learning where we have to devise. Now here I would like to say that for this purpose, before implementing anything, we have to create awareness among different sections of society. We have to create awareness about blended teaching, that means offline, online, and mix of both to our teachers. We have to do same thing with our talks, that means with our students. That means students should also be taught that what is offline teaching, what is online teaching, and what is blending teaching, what they have to do when they are online. And finally, the parents, because expectations of the parents are still same. Whatever their expectations were from offline classes, their expectations from online classes is same. Still, they are comparing that my, my child earlier used to go eight hours in a school. Now he's having only two hours of online classes. 
so the thinking of parents the expectations of parents should also be changed this is what i feel that means teacher we have to make them aware train them we have to make aware students train students we have to make aware parents about their expectations and what they have to do now here in the end i would like to say that in a vision of ours for the future teaching or for the future classroom is important as a role of a teacher what i feel that the role of a teacher is to use technology as a tool or a teaching aid to transform information into knowledge of our thoughts there are a lot of sources of getting information but the role of a teacher is to transform that information in knowledge so that they can apply that knowledge in one or the other application in a timely manner by properly mentoring and monitoring here teacher is not doing spoon feeding sir and what parents are expecting what students are expecting and what teachers are thinking is teaching is a spoon feeding activity that means i have to teach each and everything but the role of teacher has changed from spoon feeding now it has come to mentoring and monitoring and definitely the human touch with technological support will always be there and will make our teaching learning better and that is what vision we think fantastic <clears throat> i think um all of us agree that blended learning is the way forward there is going to be a segregation into the online learning and into the traditional campus learning or the classroom teaching that we that we have been having for the past several several decades um blended learning and staggered timetable is the way forward like a certain classrooms would come on certain days certain classrooms certain classes on certain days i feel that um the role of the traditional classroom setting is very crucial and the quality that uh, that 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 happens in the campus it cannot be substituted online because activities such as sports assemblies and several co curricular activities that all the schools have like dance music drama these all cannot be taken online it can be taken online but to a but in a very limited manner and going the way forward i think in 2021 or even maybe in 2022 we would be going forward with blended learning i personally feel that we should go back to the way that we were in 2019 as soon as possible because this would be really helpful for all so uh, i was reading a report yesterday by azim prem ji's foundation that how it, that they had a, it had different data that in different classes in different class levels how students have lost the mathematical ability a certain section a certain percentage of number a certain percentage of number have of students have lost a uh, language ability the comprehension ability so this all is very important and we need to bridge bridge this gap as soon as possible um but going the way forward i think like uh, ma'am said that there are cert- we need a new curriculum certain lessons can be divided that will be taken up online certain lessons will be taken up in the classroom setting so that is one way and the advantage of now having technology at, at our disposal it was always at our disposal i believe it just pushed it forward towards it during the pandemic this technology was always there it had been there for the last several years we can now share assess we can now have assessments online several schools were doing it even we were doing it so assessments can be taken online um document sharing can be taken online uh, assignments can be sent online so all this time can be saved in the classroom setting and this all can be shifted online and another thing uh, sir said that the uh, online teaching becomes very bored because a person is holding up a camera and the teacher is just teaching on the board i think that's not the case we can also make it very interesting virtual tours can be organized there are online labs which we can use and um, there there are certain there are, there are uh, multiple online learning platforms that allow the sharing of different videos of different resources in the live setting of a classroom which can make the classroom uh, online the virtual classroom more interesting there's a whiteboard sharing in which the students in, sorry the teachers can show different resources like i just mentioned so yeah these are the various advantages of technology that we'll be using through the uh, blended learning we can now analyze big data very easily the test scores 
uh, the teachers have been trained heavily into uh, using technology for their for a better output so that test scores can be analyzed and if we have a better analysis of the test scores we would know where our students are lagging behind in a particular subject and in that particular topic also so before they are promoted to the next class so we can analyze that part rectify it in the current academic year or once they move to the next class uh, uh, at the beginning some time could be allotted so that the old errors and the old shortcomings are rectified so this is also a big advantage of technology but yes blended learning and staggered setting would be the way forward actually there is a new technique these days which everybody is talking about is the flipped classroom okay the teacher was the one teaching and the students were the one getting the information we say reverse the process we give the topic and we say you all read a little about it find out a little about it and come with some information and then yes. the teacher takes over so we try different techniques to make the content interesting for the child because uh, you know little children being confined to a small screen and you know you trying your best to hold their attention is a difficult thing but all these images and ways can be tried and in 21 we are coming back now to the classrooms hopefully so we i feel we'll see more of our children and believe me not nothing can replace a classroom and a like, teacher student like connection i hope so that 21 is normal at least by the uh, term 2 yeah yes. this yes. absolutely so one interesting thing vagesh ji with your permission i would ask uh, mrs watel since uh, she uh, made this point uh, the concept of flipped classroom where uh, you are uh, to some extent probably you are passing on the agency of learning to the child yes at least uh, promoting yes. some level of self learning and then uh, which uh, mr sharma also said uh, during his uh, uh, when he was explaining that uh, when you are passing on this agency of learning to the uh, to the particular child uh, the teacher school becomes more that of mentoring so she he comes to the school and uh, gets the mentoring support from the teacher now going forward even if uh, normalcy resumes even if we go back to the 2019 days do you think that this flipped classroom model of education will gain uh, strength going forward yes it will it will definitely it will because it makes classroom teaching interesting and the teachers have enjoyed uh, taking it up like that so it right. is it's going to work out right i would like to take up uh, a very important point that mr raitani uh, brought it towards the end and that was the uh, data a uh, big data uh, giving you insights into the development of yeah. the child an individual child this is also called uh, personalized learning and uh, many ai uh, informed apps that are available say for example the genio that we have is also uh, based on that where children can map their own learning trajectory based on uh, their own uh, proficiencies and the lack of it uh, by uh, getting tested uh, with the help of artificial intelligence so that is one thing that we need to uh, what what i get from mr raitani that we need to be aware and we need to be alert towards and we need to harness that uh, thing uh, particularly the second thing that mr sharma said which was very interesting for me was that that you cannot be teaching the same way as you were teaching in the physical classroom i mean th that is that is just a delivery uh, method so i have a mouse here i can uh, mm. if i get angry i can throw it on you so it will become my tool a uh, destructive tool but then it is not meant for that the point is that there are uh, uh, what are the online possibilities the core question that mr sharma is raising is that how to achieve engagement and interaction in the online teaching otherwise you know you are you are you are foisting yourself on the students and they are simply as i said they have been reduced to being a, a insignificant thumbnails they can't ask anyone they can't talk to the teacher but then there are possibilities that online offers to create engagement and to create uh, interaction with the student that is the challenge that one has to be facing i i, I would I, like is, yes. i would like to add to this part the engagement part there are several um, online learning platforms the live classes platforms which yes. allow two way interaction first of all 
so if a child mm -hmm. raises doubt the teacher can answer the doubt another way is let's say a teacher just deliver a topic you can very quickly conduct a short pop quiz yeah see so you deliver a topic let's say from literature and uh, you quickly ask a simple question about the character of the topic so let's say uh, what was the nature of xyz you give four answers four options the students choose the right option and then you have that immediately and it's all automated you see a bar graph for different for the uh, for the different answers so you come yeah. to know whether the learn uh, the teaching and the learning part has been effective or not that's yeah. one way to proceed forward and we have been using it so yeah. pop quizzes during the live class is really very helpful i really found them, find them very interesting there's another app called kahoots which makes which is a do gamified learning so which can also be integrated into your regular teaching that also makes it very interesting that can create quizzes and questions and all those yes. kind of things yes it's a gamified learning app yeah. it's very interesting so that is what i i i if i read uh, uh, sharma ji what what hemant sharma said was this is that instead of doing what you are doing in a physical classroom you must take advantage that online yes. offers you know so these are yes. the kind of uh, examples that mr raitani gave are the examples of that online and therefore online is a different ball game you can't yes. be thinking you can't be thinking that i am going to do the same thing in the offline as i do in the online or or, or vice versa that is not going to work And only it will be more uh, interactive. Uh, and only it is going to be effective. This is what I feel as exactly. I was sharing. That's why we need to train and train and train. And train, train, and train. The more effective it will be. Exactly. So Arindam, we are. Uh, uh, you have some more uh, observations uh, before. No, I think it's. Uh, it's it has been a very very interesting. I think the points that we hear today. What, uh, we can take uh, up something like how are we going to involve the parents in the online classes? I mean, right. what is going to be the role of the parent if we are to continue with online? Till what classes are we going to? You know, lot of schools lay a thing that we don't want parents around. Let the child handle the class, and you know, on his own. That sort of things we need to work out as a school. Otherwise, you know, the classes keep getting disturbed. We need to work that thing out for the parents. Or even though we should allow parents when offline classes will start, madam. At that yes. time, we should allow parents to sit along with their child in the classroom. <laughs> so you will not get parents for so many hours. <laughs> no, when parents can sit along with their child in the online class, the parents are attending more class than the child. Child, right. Yes. So one child is supposed to attend the class. It is not meant for the parent. We need only parent support, not the parent's intervention. They interfere. They intervene a lot, and then we uh, sometimes feel that we are taking class of parents, not of parents. students. They the might start making certain issues. They'll start cherry picking. Okay, this didn't go well. This didn't go well. This didn't go well. So that. Yes. If parents start cherry picking, it will be very difficult as administrators and as school leaders to carry on the entire process smoothly. And yes. see, also it disturbs the teacher. You are not asking my child. You get messages like yes. that, which <laughs> exactly. is you know like uh, disturbs your way of handling the classroom. Sure, I have a quick uh, uh, head up uh, for the viewers who all are there. Please uh, start posting your questions for the last ten minutes. We will be. asking them those questions but uh, for parents thing i just want to make a very quick short uh, observation about the parents is that i completely agree that uh, parents have been uh, at times behaving in a very obnoxious manner uh, they are even evaluating how teachers are teaching and what are the problems with the teachers but at the same time uh, let me uh, draw your attention to the fact that parents have never ever been such an integral part of the education as they were forced to become during the pandemic during and, this uh, during yeah. this period and uh, uh, education is not the sole uh, responsibility of uh, the teachers and the schools no uh, i mean child is spending lot of time in the home also and parents responsibility was only to make the uh, homework for the children this time at least they were involved in the uh, education of the children they understood that how children uh, study so that was a i i thought that that was a good uh, turn of event and we should think in terms of how to integrate parents in a more meaningful way in the whole process of education uh, to to harness the great potential that they have parents uh, arindam 
something to say? Oh, no, I, uh, I I can't share my experience as a parent. So I have a uh-huh. daughter in class three and she ensures that I am not around when her classes are on. Mm-hmm. Uh, ensures that neither me nor uh, her mother is there when the classes are on. And, um, but I completely agree that uh, parental intervention, uh, parental interference should be minimized. Intervention as and when required is healthy. But interference in the classroom is absolutely a strict no no, and I would, uh, I, I, I personally feel that should not be there. Yeah, uh, and if, parents, sorry? Now, if parents feel they can give uh-huh. feedback to the teacher after class gets yes. over, absolutely. They can share their concern, no doubt about it. But when class is going on at that time, parents' comments or parents' interference or intervention, that is not being appreciated normally. Absolutely, absolutely. So one uh, interesting thing that I learned from this uh, discussion today is that all the school leaders who are present here are, uh, uh, are everyone is sharing that uh, flipped classroom is going to uh, be here going forward. A technology will continue to play an important role and probably uh, the role of teacher eventually, even if we go back to normalcy, will be more that of mentoring, guiding and uh, with a uh, technology coming into education, probably the uh, role of identifying student pain points, et cetera, will be passed on to the technology and the teacher will get more, will be able to give more personalized attention to the child, which is interesting. So as an organization, we have also been thinking in similar direction uh, through some of the intervent- in- initiatives that we have developed. Genio, as we explained, is, uh, is a similar uh, software which can be used in school where there is scope for both learning as well as teacher assisted learning. And in some of these schools, it is being utilized uh, for conducting flipped classrooms as well. So teachers teach using Genio and then they pass on certain portions that students should learn on their own, students prepare, and then assessments, et cetera, are also conducted. To the point which Mr. Raitani mentioned of online assessments uh, that also we have been uh, implementing in a couple of schools, we have developed certain Uh, We have developed a learning management system and an online assessment uh, uh, which helps in conducting assessments across schools, across classes, and also uh, supports in, uh, you know, randomizing questions to students so that the student next, uh, sitting next to me would get a different set of questions and I would get a different set of questions and all of that. So all of the things I think eventually going forward uh, will continue to play an important role. But... um, what, what uh, role you think uh, as school leaders, uh, organizations such as us can play in shaping this, uh, the future of education? Ma'am talked of the 21st century toolkit. Uh, any other suggestions that you have that where you think that, uh, you know, organizations like ours can play an active role in supporting school leaders in developing the new, uh, new age uh, teaching learning process? Teaching technology. We would like help in teaching technology. See, you should be the ones who are, you know, guiding our teachers with the new things that are coming forward and the new technology that can be used to implement all these things. Right. I think intense training would be one area where Ah. companies can come into play. And then I, I not only believe that Technology is limited to online learning. There are multiple spheres to technology. Yes. That the school. Uh, like we have AI, artificial intelligence. We have design thinking. We have coding. We have 3D printing. We have technology. If uh, learning is technology driven, then only I believe learning would be there for the future. And we need to prepare the kids for the future. We, we just cannot limit our discussion to online classes or to a post-pandemic era. We have to have a bigger picture in mind. So for that, like I said, big data analytics uh, would be very crucial. And uh, we are using your Kayan, which is a very good product. It allows us to showcase different things from the internet. And the best part about Kayan is you don't need a very expensive setup. It's portable. Take it to any classroom and just a plain wall or a plain whiteboard is sufficient. And so, yeah, the Kayan, like a technology like Kayan is really path breaking. It could be upgraded. It could have a better, a better curriculum map. And um, so, yeah, these are certain areas where companies like yours could really help us, help schools like us. Of course, LMS is there. 
the ERP system is there. All that makes the administrative part also very easy. And um, you could also have uh, maybe a platform like the Deepsha, which the government has developed, or a Swayam, which is specifically right. for teachers. Maybe parents, parents orientation, how we can engage the parents more positively because there are very crucial stakeholders. Right. So how can parents be engaged? What are the uh, things that they need to do to make to uh, provide a better atmosphere for their children at home? So these are certain things in which schools and tech companies, edu tech companies can go forward to create a better learning environment for the students. Yeah, thank you so much. I think this is a wonderful evidence. Uh, Mr. Sharma also wanted to say yeah, something. Yeah, please, sir. Uh, I would like to just uh, add a few more things to it. Number one is Genio is an excellent platform being provided where teacher and students, they are having an excellent, uh, we can say, interaction on that. Hmm. And I can say that every child in a classroom, whether it is offline or online, would like to see his or her own teacher instead of third person. So on a regular basis, a child would like to see his or her own teacher. Then only a binding between teacher and child will take place. And when the strong binding is there, then we are expecting a free, free flow of learning from teacher to a child or to a student or a group of students. For which I can feel that, I can say very proudly that Genio is an excellent platform being provided by you. Second thing is that uh, it is not a short-term relationship. It is long-term, hand-in-hand mm -hmm. going. And the manner in which you have organized this webinar, in mm -hmm. the same manner, the forum for parents, the forum for students, where the discussions will take place, what they are expecting from us, from a school, from our partner, technological partner, and what we are expecting from them so that a proper free flow of teaching learning can move from a teacher to a student. This is what I feel that this, uh, this type of, uh, we can say webinars along with the parents, parent groups and student groups should be very frequent. And that will definitely give us a lot of feedback that yes, in which direction now we need to proceed further. Absolutely. I think uh, it's a very, very important point uh, involving all the stakeholders in a positive manner, because uh, as you said earlier, uh, Mr. Sharma, if you recall that everyone, no one can teach, everyone can learn. So we can learn. Yes. From other. And uh, if we engage uh, with all the stakeholders, probably uh, we would be able to contribute positively towards the education ecosystem. This is a wonderful point. Thank you so yes. much. And we need to engage with one immediate stakeholder who are our viewers, because they have posted quite many questions. I first yeah. of all seek your indulgence. We will exceed by five minutes because uh, if we do not do that, uh, we will not be able to do justice to the questions that many of them have asked. Do I have the permission? Of yes. course. All right. So Arindam, would you take up the questions that are, that have come and uh, read some of them? Okay. Uh, so uh, some of the questions which have been posted in the Q and A by and also in the chat. Yeah. Uh, so, in the 1920 session started during the lockdown in April 2019, uh, it will be April 2020, I think. Students were not having the textbooks for the new class. Teachers were struggling to provide the materials, scan of chapters, etc. that time. Do you think converting all textbooks as ebooks is an alternate uh, way in the long run or the textbook in physical form will stay? Can I take this one? Yeah, please. Personally, I believe textbooks are here to stay because accessing a book for a continue for long hours continuously on a mobile screen or on a laptop, it will cause a lot of harm to the eyes. You have to continuously zoom in, zoom out if you're using it on a mobile screen. And personally also, I love reading books. I am an avid reader. So I like my books in a physical form. I'm, I do not have a Kindle. And even when I'm studying, even, even when I used to study, Books, e-books were all the, available then also, but I've always preferred uh, that my book should be in a physical form. I feel you can, it, the learning happens just in a better manner. So because it, it causes a lot of strain to the eyes, even though we now have the reading mode in the mobile screens, the laptops, not everybody could have laptops, but then again, continuously browsing and then making notes on it for four, five or six, maybe longer hours. It's just not feasible. And especially yeah. for young kids, not at all. You need to have those books. Books are here display. to stay. You can't replace the books. Books are here to stay. Yeah. You can't. They are here to stay. Absolutely. I think this is uh, this is uh, a very nice point. Uh, you know, just in continuation, in Genio, 
uh, I'm sorry, I'm just adding this point here, but uh, this is quite close to my heart. In Genio, we have used the textbook as the anchor and around each page of the textbook, we have organized content. Now there was ongoing debate whether we should have the textbook as part of the solution or not. So some said that uh, if textbook is limiting in, in a way, learning doesn't happen and all that. But our argument was that at the end of the day, you will need something like a framework, which is provided in a textbook to teach and to learn. And uh, therefore, when you say that the textbook is, here going, is going to stay here, whether it is in, uh, in, in preferably in a physical format, I think that's... Uh, and we have used textbook uh, for very many things. You know, there were many textbook was not just a textbook to be read for the class. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> so transfer the letters here and there. So don't undermine the uh, power of physical textbook. I am reading another two questions, I, I think. Uh, in some of the schools, we find that students are taught five subjects every day covering around four to five hours online. Do you think it is really helpful for the student? Is it not increasing stress? This is one. Uh, how can we involve parents in online? I, I just want to read it so that you can pick, uh, uh, pick your... Uh, how can uh, we involve students in online classes? Uh, you can take a Q&A wala question, Arindam. So one by one, we can read. Sure. We can, we can, how can we involve parents in online class to get the desired result uh, for the... For, uh, Desired result for her child. Arindam, dusra sawal Q&A mein. Yeah, so one question in the Q&A is, uh, should we prepare an SOP or a module to cater to flipped classroom or a blended classroom format? Is an SOP the need of the hour? Okay. The uh, one question that is there with me, and I'm just reading it out to, to save some time, and you can uh, decide to answer whichever question you feel like. My daughter is in class six. Sometimes I feel that she is connected to the class, but not at all connecting on it, uh, concentrating on it. When I ask, she answers, uh, this is mathematics class, complete, completely boring, no interaction. Teacher is just reading mathematics book from, uh, bo bo from the book. I can read from the book later. And one is, what is the panel's view on the importance of seat time as the standard on which educational credit and sometimes learning is based? And what steps should we take to train teachers who should focus on participating learning, participative learning instead of lecture mode learning? I, I think uh, there are two more questions. Do you think I should read them? No, I think let's take up these and maybe let us, there are other let questions. Let us take can... up these. See, yeah. to make any class in timing that everybody is questioning us four hours, five hours, it depends on the age group of a child. You know, if you are running an online class for a class one child or a two child, naturally it cannot be the whole day. It has to be confined to less number of hours. So we try and, you know, make it you know, from nine to 12 and giving little breaks in the middle for the little ones that we are running, say one to five. After that, we increase it a little for the other ones. And we don't put every subject, that's what we were doing. We don't put every subject every day. We try and mix so that everybody gets at least an English class four times a week or a maths class every day. Something like that, we try and mix the timetable so that it does not become too much for the child. And we give a gap between the classes so that you can get up and stretch and come back and sit for the class. That's how we try to run it, thinking, uh, you know, keeping in mind that, you know, attention span and children are at home. So they would like to get out and walk up and down and, you know, that sort of stuff and come back to the classroom. So we have tried to mix and match, but, you know, we can't just say a rule that, you know, you cannot run it six hours, good or bad, because a school runs for a certain number of hours, but school has some activities going on in the middle. We have assembly, we have a games period, we have a music period, whereas these sort of things are in the background in these classes. So we have tried to you know, adjust with the children, keeping the age of the child with the number of hours. So I feel from class one to five, nine to 12, we don't go beyond that for our children. That's how I conduct it. Three hours, nine to 12. 
would you like to take up any other question that i there is a question on the uh, need for an sop to uh, for a blended flipped learning any somebody would like to respond to it it would be nice if somebody made it but uh, as a teacher i can make out which one and which right. way but if somebody yeah. gives a ready made thing to me it's easier that's how i look at it right so i'm um, so i sorry boliye sir ha may i yes please please sir answer to most of the questions are already available in nep 2020 that means boring classrooms are going to be replaced by skillful interactive interesting classes this is what nep 2020 is focusing on with technology classroom everything integrated in it second thing is that the time duration is not important whether 2 hours 3 hours 4 hours 5 hours 6 hours the time duration is not important the important thing here is the interactiveness and interestingness of any class so if a teacher is interactive and interesting the teacher can make subject interesting and student can sit for hours and hours on the other side if the teacher is boring or is following only lecture form or is reading only from a textbook then even though in 10 minutes the students can feel bored so time duration is not important the importance is we have to make whatever we are teaching more interesting and interactive where participation of students is more important than simply delivering the contents from textbook by teacher to second thing is that earlier the subjects were being taught in isolation that means this is mathematics period after that hindi period after that science period then ss period like that so there were compartments periods we can say that they are like compartments so suddenly when a new teacher comes students have to close earlier books and open the books for that particular subject now what i personally feel and what we have done is that instead of having compartmentalized teaching we have integrated them and two three subjects integration is there the teachers do exercise before going to class that okay this topic i am going to teach this topic i am going to teach and in the beginning only they plan out that in this week in an integrated way we are going to teach students and students are not going to learn only one subject but by the activity or by that particular class they are going to learn multiple subjects and same content they are having that in their syllabus even though in our online class also we have done same thing that if a teacher is teaching that means the teacher is teaching mathematics also as well as science also for that particular subject integrating both those subjects and concepts in top so this is what we are doing and sometimes they are having one hour class sometimes they have two hours class and depending upon the standard because in lower classes they are having very less time spent of their focus whereas in higher classes that means 9 10 11 12 they can sit for hours for them mathematics science they can sit for one hour two hour without getting bored but when a child is in lower classes that means in primary classes there it is very difficult for a child to focus on a small screen for a particular subject whether it is english maths hindi evs or whatever it is there one hour sub, uh, we can say class we have to make more interactive more interesting and more involvement of students along with their parents this is what and we feel that yes the students are also enjoying learning parents are also satisfied now and then teachers are also acting their role as a mentor and monitor not as a spoon feeder in offline classes they were doing spoon feeding now they are simply mentoring guiding students and then monitoring talking to parents talking to students students are also searching and then they all are working collectively even though in the lower class also we are doing same thing great right. this is this is fantastic practice i am afraid arindam that uh, i will have to apologize to some of the questions that they have posted that uh, we have run out of time despite giving 10 yeah. 5 minutes asking for 5 minutes taking 10 minutes more uh, we will have to uh, wind it up any parting uh, words from any one of you before i request arindam to give you a profuse thanks I think uh, thank you, Mr. Jha, and thank you everyone in the organizing team for having such a wonderful debate on the big question and on the way forward. 
it's it was good to hear both our esteemed panelists and the questions were also very interesting and it feels good that when you talk to such enlightened people you get to learn certain new things and you interact with these wonderful and beautiful people and you get to hear such beautiful thoughts so for me it was a very wonderful experience and i would just like to thank everyone uh, for organizing and for attending this webinar thank you so much so over to you arindam for the so i would also like to thank everyone uh, uh, mrs deepika watal mr himant sharma mr joy raithani for uh, taking your time out and sharing your perspective on um, how we can make education better in a post pandemic world and what we need to do collectively uh, to to achieve the desired outcomes uh, for us uh, you know in schoolnet uh, our tagline is learning for life uh, so we believe in lifelong learning both for ourselves as well as uh, we would like to democratize access to lifelong learning opportunities for our students and uh, the phrase mr uh, sharma mentioned the other day no one can teach but everyone can learn has remained with me will continue to uh, that will continue to remind me that uh, it's only through learning that we can move ahead yeah. uh, we intend to convert this uh, discussion into a regular practice so that eventually we can build up a community of practice where all stakeholders can share their views and together we have a healthy discussion on topics of interest of importance both strategic as well as tactical so that we can address the challenges facing education going forward and so, we would also we would also like to uh, make it a community of practice as we call it yes. so yes. Uh, uh, you are here but you will not uh, go off from the cyber world we would like to create a kind of a channel where some questions will be put and uh, we would like to create a discussion thread uh, so whenever you come out there i take your permission if you allow us to do that uh, where we can create some such things some questions that were unanswered you can uh, respond to those questions you can post some more questions from us uh, so that that is one uh, small permission that i want from three panelists that if we can if we can try to go ahead with create creating that kind of a thread absolutely And then Absolutely. finally, we can no issue. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank finally, you I, so I, much. I want to thank uh, the technical team for making it such a slick and uh, smooth process. Thank you, uh, Raman Avinkar. Thank you, Nitin. Thank you, everybody who is there. I also want to thank my academic team for uh, their uh, very strong support that they always give, and they are committed. I uh, also. Uh, Uh, have special words for the communications team who have made it so good and uh, they have put in all their efforts into this uh, uh, this program yeah and also thanks to our participants who have uh, the attendees in general who have uh, joined here I, more than thanks I, i would like to communicate that it is important for us to be participating in these discussions raising questions because this is a fantastic opportunity that we get to learn from each other so Thank you to school net. Thank you thank you everybody thank and you thank you thank we you. are signing off.